Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread and Scripture Song broadcast for this second day of April, Tuesday, 2024, and today's topic is titled, Faith is God's Watch. Amen. And we'll be getting into the topic here in a few minutes, but first I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and he too can be your Lord and Savior today if he's not already, and he wants to save your soul if he if you have not trusted him yet, and if you have put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, well, I hope you're having a good walk with him and good relationship. And if you've gotten discouraged about anything, hope this uh, broadcast will be a help and a blessing and encouragement to keep you going and keep uh, keep on keeping on for the Lord. And so we need to keep on doing that and be in church and be around other believers so we can edify one another and. All that stuff, so, amen. Alright, so we're going to start with today's scripture song from Psalms 46.10. And, uh, so we'll go ahead and do that here. Let's go ahead and look at Psalm 46 uh, really quick before we get into the scripture song singing. So we can see who wrote this particular uh, psalm here. So, Psalm, uh, what was it, 46? Uh, yeah, okay, Psalm 46. And let's see here. So Psalm 46, and this says here, it's to the chief musician for the sons of Korah, a song upon Alamoth. And we have 11 verses here, so I'll go ahead and read this to you in its entirety. It says, God is our refuge and strength, very present help in trouble, and he sure is. Uh, therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make the city of God, uh, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High, God is in the midst of her. She shall, excuse me, she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease Unto the end of the earth, he breaketh the bow, uh, the bow, uh, yeah, the bow, and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Uh, be, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. So that is Psalm 46 in its entirety. <clears throat> so, all right, so let's go ahead and get into the scripture song verse now that we read the entirety of this uh, particular psalm here. So Psalm 46, verse 10, and sing along here with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. Psalms 46, 10. Be still and know that I right. am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Amen. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know, be still and know, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know, I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. I will be exalted among the the heathen I will be exalted in the earth. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know, be still and know, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know. That's right. So let's be still and know that he is God <coughs> and all that. So we'll go back and 
do the scripture songs again towards the end of the broadcast. Now it's time to get into today's topic for the second day of April, Tuesday, 2024, titled Faith is God's Watch. And we have here Romans 4, 17b, and it says, And calleth those things which be not as though they were, Romans 4, 17b, and it would be good to get the entire context of this. So let's go ahead and go to Romans chapter 4 and see what's going on here in this chapter. So Romans chapter 4 and get the entirety of this chapter and this verse here. All right, so 4. <clears throat> and this was uh, verse 17. So let's see here. Let's go back to the beginning here. And it says here in chapter 4 of Romans, verse 1, What shall we say then, uh, that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God, right? For what saith the scripture, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. That's right. So not any type of works could save Abraham, nor could it save any of us. It was by him having faith in what God said and told him to do, and that was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness, even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Uh, excuse me. Uh, cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon the cir uncircumcision also. For we say that faith was Reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was a circ in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of righteousness of the faith which he had yet been uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also and the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had be, being yet uncircumcised, for the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Uh, for if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect, because the law worketh a wrath, for that where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to uh, all the seed. Uh, we read that. So, uh, verse 16 again says, Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not through... Uh, uh, be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might be become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God, through unbelief, but was strong in faith and giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform, and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. 
Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom shall be imputed or to whom it shall be imputed uh, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Hallelujah. So that's the entirety of chapter 4 in its context. So now that we've read that t chapter there, <clears throat> let's go ahead and get into today's topic. And again, Romans 4.17 says, And calleth those things which be not as though they were. And of course we've got the entirety of that chapter there, including that verse. And today's author is Brother Tim Green from Revival in Our Times, Day Heights, Ohio. So let me read you what he wrote here on this topic of faith is God's watch. He says here and writes here, As you surely know, there was some time between the promise of a son before the sun rise came in the birth of Isaac enough to bring an Ishmael into the world. So let me reread that. Make sure I, I'm reading it right here. <clears throat> so again, he writes, says here, as you surely know, there was some time between the promise of a son before the sunrise came in the birth of Isaac, enough to bring an Ishmael into the world. Uh, he put in parentheses, and he says, I would think most of us have a watch or two, and also enough clocks in our homes to keep us aware of what time it is, right? I really don't think that in the land of eternity, past, present, and future, he writes in parentheses, that anyone wears a watch, right? No need to wear a watch in eternity. Uh, thus my thought, faith is God's watch. So that's what uh, he put there. So his thought was, Faith is God's watch. And he says, I mean by that that there is often, from our viewpoint, a great time lapse between our initial expression of faith and prayer and the answer. And to be honest or transparent, there are some prayers I have prayed over the years. I hope God never answers, <laughs> right? Same here. So some of us have prayed, oh God, let blank be my husband slash wife, or, oh Lord, please give me that job, or please, Father, give me that ministry, church, or dot, dot, dot. And looking back, aren't you glad that you didn't marry him, in parentheses, or excuse me, marry her, and in parentheses him, if you're a woman praying to marry a certain man, aren't you glad you didn't marry her or him, whatever gender you are, man or woman? Uh, take that job or become pastor there instead of where God put you and wants you, right? So, <laughs> should be thankful for that, those things, uh, because he might have put you um, in that spot where you were praying to go and then it didn't turn out the way you wanted it or uh, marrying that person, whether you're a man or a woman, uh, praying to marry the opposite uh, um, sex there. And praying for that particular person, and then, and then God kept you from that person for a reason, and you were like, "Okay, thank you, Lord, for not letting me get with that person." <laughs> Amen. So, whatever you're praying for, and God doesn't answer that prayer, and there might be a reason for it. So, <clears throat> all right. So, continue on. He writes, "The Lord's timing is always perfect, but often a little frustrating." Mostly to us Americans who want instant everything, right? We want it now, now, now. And God's like, no, not now. <laughs> and he concludes with this. Remember how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Romans eleven thirty three b So there you go. So let's be thankful for those prayers that God has not answered and kept us from things that might have been more harmful than good to us. <laughs> Excuse me. So, praise the Lord for those things. That he doesn't answer when he, when you're praying for certain things. So, alright. Okay, so now let's go ahead and open the Daily Strength Volume 2 book. As we're continuing on this week on Council. And this is by Douglas D. Stauffer and Andrew B. Ray. 
And we are on day 59, Tuesday, titled The Wisdom of Wise Counsel. And we have here Proverbs 1, five says, A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. <clears throat> Proverbs 1, five, and uh, um, in the rest of the chapter there, you can read uh, the rest of that uh, passage there. All right, so introductory thoughts. Uh, Though not all counsel received will be wise counsel, it is still wise to receive counsel. Yeah. Uh, A foolish man neglects to consider the need for counsel. He believes his own understanding sufficient. And that's Proverbs 12, 15 for the reference. A wise man, however, not only seeks counsel, but hearkens to the wisdom found in such. The Bible says that the absence of counsel causes people to fall, Proverbs eleven fourteen, and purposes to be disappointed, Proverbs fifteen twenty two and Proverbs twenty, verse eighteen, and that only a fool would go to war without without it, Proverbs twenty four six. So, references there. Uh, not only does counsel help to develop godly plans, but also ensures that our motives are pure. Counsel provides safety on the very, or excuse me, on a variety of levels. So, counsel provides safety on a variety of levels. Proverbs eleven fourteen and Proverbs twenty four six are the references. So that's the introductory thoughts, and now for devotional thoughts for children, which we can apply this to all of us in some way. So it says here, God sent a prophet to tell Amaziah not to worship idols. Amaziah told the prophet to leave him alone or he would have him killed. <laughs> the prophet uh, then told Amaziah of his destruction, Second Chronicles 25, 14-16. Amaziah should have listened to good counsel, right? And so that was for children. And that can, we can take heed, all of us, to that. So now for everyone, do you have important decisions to make? Have you considered seeking counsel from someone who loves the Lord and knows his word? Do you find yourself seeking counsel only from people who would agree with your plans? (laughs) Why is that so? (laughs) Is it possible that you seek to justify your actions rather than truly desiring God's will and ways? Ouch. Yeah. So, take heed of those questions. Okay, so now prayer thoughts. It says, ask the Lord to help you see the importance of wise counsel. And then ask the Lord to give you counsel that checks your motive. (laughs) Right? And then the song from the book is titled, Let Us Run the Christian Race. And I could not find an instrumental for that one, but I will read you the stanzas since it is in the book. And you can get an idea and perhaps try to play it on your own time if you have a copy of the book or... Look it up on your own. See if you can find an instrumental for it. Or uh, uh, something like that. So, Alright, so that's that. And now let's go ahead and get into the one hymn that uh, I was fi- able to find a sampling to this uh, first one here. And then I'll go to the second one and give you the stanzas and read them to you. Even though I don't have an instrumental for that second one there. So this first one is Hymn 699. We've already uh, made it all the way to Hymn 699 and almost to Hymn 700 in the book. And this is another one of these, The Prayer of the Saint Hymns, a spiritual song titled Approach My Soul, the Mercy Seat, written by John Newton. And he is, um, you know him from uh, his uh, most famous song, Amazing Grace. And this is another one of his hymns that he's written. So he lived from 1725 to 1807. And then we have Francosis H. Uh, B- Barth- Barth- L. Elamon. And that's F-R-A-N-C-O-I-S. Fr- Francosis H. Um, Bar- Barth- L. Elamon. B-A-R-T-H-E-L-E-M-O-N. 1741 1808, and then arranged by Robert Simpson, 1790 to 18, 
32. So six stanzas here, and there is a story for this one. So let me press play, and we'll listen to it first, and then try to sing along with it. So... <clears throat> Here at the bottom of the page, it says, in a letter to Mr. Goodwin, or Godwin, um, in a letter to Mr. Godwin, a man whom we know only by the initials J.O., shared his testimony, having heard Mr. Godwin preach at Eden Street, the man recorded the power of these words, and the preacher's a message upon his life we give his account here for some time before I heard you December 14 1845 I had been in a most dreadful backsliding state on the Lord's Day morning I separated from my companions and went to Eden Street with all my misery and despair but when the hymn was given out, I was quite overcome and melted down at the Lord's feet. Quoting the first lines, he adds, 
I asked with a mental voice, What? None? And a voice answered again and again, None can. Oh, what a mercy it is to be kept by an almighty power. Well, amen. So that was that uh, man's testimony there in his own words. So that's the story there. And now let me give you the references. So stanza 1, we have Hebrews 4.16. And then stanza 2, we have Matthew 11.28. Stanza 3, we have 2 Corinthians 1, 8 through 11 and 2 Corinthians 7, 5 through 7. Stanza 4, we have Revelation 12, 10. Stanza 5, we have Romans 5, 8, and Romans 10, 13. So that is the end of the first hymn there. And now let's go ahead back a little ways to hymn 760, titled Let Us Run the Christian Race. And again, I could not find an instrumental for this one. But this is uh, hymn 760 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. And this is one of these, the Unity of the Saints hymns, spiritual song, titled Let Us Run the Christian Race, written by Sidney Dyer, who lived from 1785 to 1835, and then Edward J. Hopkins, 1818 to 1901. So there's four stanzas here, so I'll read each of these stanzas. And then if you want to... Um, Try to find a instrumental on your own time or get a copy of this hymn. I'm sure there's got to be somebody that's done this in instrumental form somewhere. Or maybe you can find somebody in your church to play it for you to find out how it sounds. All right, so stanza one, it says, Enter Jesus bids thee come, uh, welcome. Uh, we reread that. Enter Jesus bids thee welcome in the fullness of his grace. With this hand of love, we give thee in our hearts the warmest place. Hence, together, hence, together, let us run the Christian race. Stanza 2. Trials hard may oft beset, beset thee, firmer on the armor brace. Fight the fight, a crown awaits thee, slacken not thy cheerful pace. Firm together, firm together, let us run the Christian race. Stanza 3. Joy doubts find beyond expression, find in Zion's love embrace. Loses or losses here are turned to treasures, gladness smiles and sorrow's face. Ah, together, I, or I together, I together. Let us run the Christian race. And stand to four. Come and share our joys and sorrows. Zion's friends bring no disgrace. Blush not then to speak her praises. Lord, proclaim her Savior's grace. And together, and together, he will crown us in the race. Amen. So that's the, the hymn there. And now the references for each stanza. We have stanza 1 is 2 Timothy 2, 1, Galatians 2, 9, and Hebrews 12, 1. Stanza 2 is Ephesians 6, 10, 1 Timothy 6, 12, and 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Stanza 3 is 1 Peter 1, 8, 2 Corinthians 12, 9, and Philippians 2, 16. And then stanza 4, we have Romans 12, 15, Romans 1, 16, and 1 Corinthians 9.25. So that is the end of the second hymn there. And so now we put this ahead to tomorrow's hymn. And all right, tomorrow's hymn. First one is a good one here. Or actually, it'll be the only one for tomorrow. Because tomorrow is Wednesday. All right, so now let's go ahead and grab the scripture song book and sing yesterday's and today's hymns, or I mean scripture songs. From Brother Dean and Sister Patty. So yesterday was the first. In Proverbs 21, 15. So here we go. Proverbs 21, 15. It, it is joy to the, to the just, just to do, do judgment, judgment. But destruction but shall be to the workers, workers of, of iniquity. iniquity. Right. 
It is joy to the just to do judgment, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. It is joy to the just to do judgment, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. Joy, 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 is joy to the just and due judgment, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. It is joy to the just and due judgment. But destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. Joy, 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 joy. Praise the Lord. All right, now today's again. Psalms forty-six, ten. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. That's right. Be, be still, still and know that I am God. Be still and know. Be still and know. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know. Exalted among the heathen, I will be exalted in the earth. I will be exalted among the heathen, I will be exalted in the earth. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know, be still and know, be still and know that I am God. Be still. Lando. That's right. Good to be still and know that he is God and all that. So that is the end of today's broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song. And this is a good one here. I like this one a lot from Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6. And that's uh, tomorrow's scripture song. And I'll read that to you here in a minute. And then the Baptist bread and Daily Strength uh, devotionals. There is no devotional for the Daily Strength um, book. So um, tomorrow. So we'll be doing the f more Fight On stories um, here. And um, I'll have to grab the book here and give you those stories again. I forgot to grab it out of the cabinet here. So let me, I'll do that here really quick. And then give you the hymn for tomorrow. So tomorrow's uh, scripture song is from Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Amen. And that's the theme of the youth rally this year. Trust in the Lord. And from these passages here, from Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. So if you remember to pray for the BBC youth rally uh, coming up here um, in a few weeks, uh, the 19th and 20th, and Brother Travis Alltop will be the one preaching at those um, youth rally meetings and then also be preaching during the uh, midweek uh, service uh, the, the week before uh, or a couple of days before the actual youth rally. So pray to, for him and his preaching and for all those uh, teens coming and that they would be um, in attendance and listening and will take something uh, with them to be better their lives as um, believers that those that have trusted Jesus as their Savior already and those that may not have trusted Jesus yet that they would come to the Lord and trust him and all that so um, so pray pray to that end for that uh, youth rally coming up here in a few weeks so amen all right and then the workers also pray for them that they would be um, ready to to work and help those uh, teens to to uh, be better Christians and all that. So, all right. So that's tomorrow's scripture song. And then tomorrow's Baptist bread topic is going to be titled um, God's Spiritual Antibodies. So God's Spiritual Antibodies. And we have 2 Corinthians 12, 9a is the 
uh, passage and then db is the initials for uh david brown pastor of central baptist church in decatur illinois not the david brown from bible baptist this is a different david brown but we have our own david brown brother david uh, and he's the youth pastor and the assistant pastor of bible baptist church um, our own david brown there and sister lauren brown and um Pray for their family. And then, of course, this is David Brown, a different David Brown here. So, amen. All right. So, that's the author for tomorrow, for the third Wednesday. And then we have the Daily Strength Volume 2 book as we're continuing through this topic of counsel. And tomorrow is church night, no devotional. It's day 60. And we have Psalm 3311 for the passage here. And then let me grab the more Fight on Stories book. I meant to grab it. Let me try to reach in here and get it. So I can give you the stories from the more Fight on book here. All right. I want to slam that there. Okay. So this is the more Fight on Stories book. This is volume two. two. There's two volumes to this series of books. And <clears throat> tomorrow... All right, let's see. We'd be doing three stories tomorrow. And the first one is on page 216, titled Fight On and On and On. And that's the first story. And then the second story is titled The Other Six-Day War. And that's on page 217 and 218. And then we have some passages here from Judges chapter 3, verses 1 through 2, and Judges 531. So those will be the passages there. And then we have the final story on page 220 and 221, which is titled, The Lady Was Unsinkable. And this is talking about the Titanic. So those will be the three stories tomorrow from the More Fight on Stories book. And so that's that. And then the hymn for tomorrow, only one hymn. And this is titled, I Must Tell Jesus. And this is a really good one. And we've reached him. 700 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book for tomorrow. And this will be another one of these, The Prayer of the Saint Hymns, a spiritual song uh, written by Elisha A. Hoffman. And she's the only uh, or, uh, the only person that wrote this is Elisha A. Hoffman. So, all right. So, no story for this one. And uh, put that aside there. And this is the cover of the... Um, Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book, and this is um, the brown cover, and there's also a dark blue cover, and then there's a lighter grayish bluish co cover, and then a leather bound edition. So when you go to the website, whichever one you choose to have, um, those are the three colors, and then the, the leather bound edition to that book, and then the Daily Strength Volume 2 book. This is the cover to that, and there's four volumes to this series of devotional books, and there's um, for those I just said and then the hymn book and those are all found on melodypublications.com is the website there and then the more fight on stories book this is from brother Gip and all his books can be found at daystarpublishing.com and that's the website there for all the books from brother Gip that he's written and then the scripture song book and CDs can be found at www daily scripture songs.com that's brother dean and sister patty runyon's website and they are missionaries to port kaituma guyana although they are here in the states right now in florida and he's awaiting to find out when he can get a transplant for his colon so it's got a long journey ahead of him and pray that perhaps that'll get uh, moved along quicker so uh and then also pray for brother blake and sister haley as they are um, continuing to um, serve the Lord up there in uh, Norfolk, Virginia, getting on those ships and stuff. And they're planning on going to Port Kaituma, Guyana this summer to do uh, help with the v VBS program over there. So and I think Sister Patty will be going back for that uh, period of time to help out, uh, to set things up and everything. And Brother Dean might be going back there, depending on his health and stuff. So pray pray for all that. Um there and I think it's the first week of July is when it's going to be taking place at VBS over there. So pray for them and uh, amen. All right, and then the Baptist Bread devotional book. This is the cover for uh, from last month and this month, um, March and April. And if you order now, you'll most likely get the one for 
May and June, and that comes in a box of 10, and it's $12.95. Every other month, you'll get a box of these, and then you can keep one for yourself and hand the others out to the other uh, other people or put it on the free table or however you um, put these books out. And so, amen for Bible ba or the Baptist bread and all these men that write these uh, devotionals um, each and every month and every day. So, praise the Lord for them. All right, so pray for them and their families. And uh, that's that information there. Uh, it's uh, baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org. And that second uh, website has other books available to order if you check that website out there. And then the Bible, the King James Bible, this is the first book we should always be getting into and reading it and studying it and showing ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth and going to God in prayer and seeking his face and asking him to help you and guide you in all truth and to have a better relationship with him and to grow in your faith. So praise the Lord for the Bible. And then also the other broadcast I have been doing, that's the um, book of Genesis uh, by Brother James Knox. Um, that's uh, part of the Christ Honor and Commentary series. And uh, that book is not in print at the present time, but uh, his other books can be found at www dot jameswnox.org or going straight to the store part of the uh, website and that's store dot jameswnox.org and look up all his books and other materials from him and then the uh, youtube channel for the church is james knox sermons youtube channel where you can listen to all his sermons from him and other men that preach the bibles and sunday bible and sunday school and uh during services that brother james is out of town so check all those videos out and sermons so praise the Lord um, for that. And um, then the podcast I've been doing, where I've been reading uh, the book on Eric Liddell, part of the uh, Christian Heroes Then and Now series by YWAM Publishing, uh, written by Jeff and Janet Binge. And you can get those books at ywampublishing.com. I believe that's the website there, if I remember correctly. So um be doing another chapter here, Lord willing, soon. i got to get uh, on that. So... I try to do that uh, on my next day off. So praise the Lord for these books and these uh, Christian heroes and missionaries around the world. So, all right. And that's uh, God's Messenger Lighthouse Podcast is the is the platform um, where you can listen to these uh, books being read to you. And if you like to listen to the, uh, books about different Christians, uh, past and present. Um, so that's how you can listen to that. And uh, amen. All right. Well, that'll be about it for today. So thanks for watching. And may the Lord richly bless you until next time. Bye-bye for now.